Now, if you want to avoid rigid foam and spray foam, this is a completely foam-free assembly. With this strategy, we're using a taped smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent vapor diffusion and air leakage into the roof assembly from the interior and condensing on the roof deck or on the underside of the roof membrane or coverboard up here. The smart vapor retarder prevents vapor from migrating upwards, but allows moisture to dry out of the assembly when conditions get wet or humid. And then by taping the smart vapor retarder membrane, we are not only preventing vapor diffusion, but we're preventing air leakage that could transport moisture into the roof assembly. So by providing this membrane, this allows us to insulate the roof assembly with a wider range of air and vapor permeable insulation products like mineral wool, wood fiber, or cellulose insulation. So in this roof assembly, we have tapered rigid mineral wool installed above the roof deck and bat or blown in insulation installed below the roof deck within the framing cavities. The only reason we have the rigid mineral wall above the roof deck is to slope the roof down to our drainage system and it also happens to provide some extra fire protection and a thermal break. Then we can insulate the framing cavities with any insulation of our choosing because that smart vapor retarder prevents moisture from getting into this space and condensing. We get a lot of freedom with this assembly. Then installed over the smart vapor retarder we have 2x3 furring or strapping to provide a service cavity for electrical conduit that won't impact the air barrier and it helps us to integrate any lighting or ceiling penetrations into that smart vapor retarder. We want to make sure that every single penetration in the membrane for recessed cans or exhaust fans are sealed tightly to that smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent air leakage. And then we have our standard gypsum board for our interior finish. Now we do run into the same limitations as the previous two hybrid assemblies. We can't run our ductwork within the roof framing since we've eliminated that incidental service cavity. We have to build a soffit or a drop ceiling below the level of the vapor retarder to house our HVAC ductwork and to make sure that we don't have any discontinuities in that thermal control layer and that we don't have any moisture condensing on the ductwork from air leakage where the ducts penetrate the ceiling plane. Additionally, this makes HVAC maintenance significantly easier since the roof assembly won't have to be opened up and potentially compromised. Just like the other hybrid assemblies, this strategy also can't be used with steel framing due to the high conductivity of the steel. However, this strategy is a great option if you want to avoid foam products, and it tends to be more cost effective than purchasing a whole bunch of rigid insulation since we can just use blown in insulation. If you're designing or building a flat roof and don't really know where to start with all these critical decisions, I've laid it all out for you in my climate specific design guides to flat roofs, where we cover topics like assembly design to maximize long term durability and performance, membrane selection and specification applications, insulation, cover boards, and so much more. I found that manufacturer's instructions and product data sheets can only get you so far. I really wish something like this existed when I designed my first contemporary home with a flat roof. You can find these guides and the details at asiri-designs.com shop. Links will be in the description below.